A joint project by the South Korean and U.S. governments have constructed a naval base in Jeju Island, just south of the Korean Peninsula. Located in Gangjang Village, a small 500-year-old fishing and farming community on the southern tip of Jeju, where the overwhelming majority of villagers voted against this naval base, with 94% opposing the construction. The South Korean government has been oppressively trying to build a war base, falsely and absurdly naming the base the Civilian Military Complex Tor Beauty Port. This military naval base, I mean beauty port, is being used by the U.S. military in its strategy to contain China in the Asia-Pacific using aggressive destroyers equipped with U.S. missile defense systems. Jeju Island was designated as, quote, the Peace Island by the Korean government on January 27, 2005, as part of a formal apology for the 1948 April 3rd massacre in which government forces and right-wing thugs under the direction of the U.S. Army slaughtered anywhere from 30,000 to 60,000 Jeju civilians and burned 70% of the island's villages to the ground as the people rose up against the U.S.-led move towards the division of Korea. During this time, the United Nations, dominated by the U.S., forced undemocratic elections onto the Korean people ultimately resulting in the division of the peninsula. Now, the forced base construction is bringing renewed state violence on the people of Jeju in what many consider a second April 3rd event. The people of Jeju and Korea aspire for the island to be a true peace island with no war bases to set an example for the establishment of a truly peaceful Asia Pacific. Uh, over a four month period, uh, from mid-November 1948, government forces adopted a scorched, scorched earth strategy in which villages situated in the middle of Mount Hala were burned to the ground and their residents, irrespective of age and gender, were killed mercilessly. When the base was first being proposed to be located in Jeju, it was presented to two other villages before going to its third village at Gangjang. The first two villages overwhelmingly opposed the base proposal, but by the third time, the South Korean government developed new tactics to get the base constructed. The government essentially held an undemocratic voting process, prevented local villagers from attending and misleading them about the information on formal meetings, and developed false information to present to the public. This is how the military base became to be presented as a joint military-civilian port, now officially known as the Beauty Port.
우리 강정마을을 지키는 길이 제주도를 평화의 섬 제주를 지키는 길이요 대한민국이 평화를 지키는 길이요 나아가서는 세계의 평화까지 지키는 길이라고 저희들은 생각하고 있습니다 저희들 열심히 싸우겠습니다 여러분 함께 해주십시오 고맙습니다 Another strategy behind this base is to have it quote officially be under the South Korean government banner while allowing full use of the base by the U.S. military. This helps to offset the blame from the U.S. military and onto the host government, South Korea. In Kangjang, a community of approximately 1,500 farmers and fishermen have long been in the struggle against the South Korean government's actions. The government has claimed that the base will have a minimum impact on the environment and that the base would create jobs and attract new tourists to the area. The villagers will have none of it. The local villagers see that the base has already negatively impacted their way of life, their village and the peace that the Jeju Islanders strive for, but the Navy continues to destroy farms and fishing grounds despite the voices against it. Now it's important to understand that Jeju has its own distinctive island ecosystem and culture. It's really known for its natural beauty. and. It is the only island in the entire world that has three UNESCO designations. It was designated as a Biosphere Conservation Reserve in 2002. It was designated as a World Heritage Site in 2007. And it was designated as a Global Geopark in 2010. Again, this is the only island in the world with all three designations. During the 13 years of daily protests from both citizens of Jeju and international visitors, organizers on Jeju Island have developed many creative ways to disrupt the construction and visits by the U.S. military. In 2011, organizers staged a sit-in on the construction site, halting construction for several, several months. University students, religious figures, and internationally recognized activists protested the base construction in solidarity with the Kangjang villagers, while also exposing their harassment that they faced from local authority figures. In 2012, official leaders and members of various political parties in South Korea visited Jeju along with law students, professors, candidates, and others to stand in solidarity with the local villagers to oppose the base. The Republic of Korea's Supreme Court ruled the construction of the base as legal, despite the fact that the government began construction before examining environmental risk assessment reports. Also in 2012, village leaders invited the Global Network to hold our annual space organizing conference in Kangjang Village, and on the last day, a direct action was held resulting in the arrest and detention of 20 Korean and international peace activists when they kayaked to the sacred rocky coast that was being blasted apart to build the Navy base piers. In 2013, over 1,000 demonstrators, including filmmaker Oliver Stone, participated in the Grand March for Life and Peace and the Human Chain that encircled the base. Stone told reporters, quote, This base will host U.S. Aegis missile destroyers, aircraft carriers, nuclear submarines. It's part of Obama's Pacific pivot, put in place to threaten China. We have to stop this. All this is leading up to a war, and I've seen war in Asia. I don't want another war. In 2014, tensions between the South Korean government and the local Catholic community rose to a high. The Catholic community in Korea had been protesting the base for several years. Catholic priests and nuns were arrested for opposing the base, but the authorities said they were, quote, interfering with police business. You know, we got excited, yeah. just excited, because they are thief, they are liar, they occupy a Kangjong village. So we, this is a kind of resist against the occupier, mm -hmm. labor base. So we should continue. In 2015, officials from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea commemorated the 67th anniversary of the Jeju Uprising by calling on South Koreans to oppose the U.S. military presence in their country. DPRK officials also declared that the naval base at Gangjang Village is proof 
that Jeju Island is still under imperial rule. In addition, while the corporation Samsung was one of the main contractors for constructing the naval base, the Republic of Korea Defense Procurement Agency announced that the Korean Commercial Arbitration Board ordered the Korean Navy to pay Samsung 7.3 billion won or $23.2 million because of the delays from the protests. In 2016, the base was officially opened on February 26. Now, the Aegis destroyers that are using the naval base are outfitted with missile defense interceptors, which are key elements in a U.S. first strike attack plan, mainly aimed at China and Russia. The role of these interceptors would be to take out any retaliatory strikes after the U.S. preemptively attacks Chinese or Russian nuclear forces. So, Rather than protect the people of Jeju by building up U.S. and South Korean military infrastructure on the island, it now makes the island a prime target for attack. Going further, Jeju is now being prepped to build a second airport. Again, this airport is being presented to fulfill the needs for the growing tourist industry, but many islanders are skeptical and believe that the airport will be used by the Air Force branches of both the U.S. and South Korea. Just like the naval base, which was and still is presented as mainly a civilian use port, this second airport will most likely be a continuation of the militarization of the island. And again, the villages which are being impacted by the airport construction were not consulted and were not asked to give their consent to the new airport. International support has poured in to stand in solidarity with the people of Jeju. Internationally recognized activists like Gloria Steinem and Noam Chomsky have signed petitions in support of opposing the second airport. The global network stands in solidarity with the people of Jeju Island who have continued their struggle for peace and justice against the militarization of their homelands. U.S. imperialism is threatening all life on Earth, and Jeju Island is a prime example of the global problems we face. Environmental destruction, heightened tensions between imperialist powers, local communities exploited and oppressed by superpowers, and resources siphoned away from basic necessities and into the pockets of the military-industrial complex. For more information on this struggle on Jeju, you can visit SaveJejuNow.org, where activists and organizers continue to provide up-to-date information on their struggle. Give back the land to the people of Jeju, stop the construction of the second airport, and continue to fight for peace and justice. <laughs> Come